All right, let's go to our class today. Okay, now we're going to look at, uh, previously what we have in our beam system is concentrated load, which is one, one loading. Yes. You oh yeah, I, I, I'm not, yeah, sorry, I apologize. Okay, do you see my screen now? Yeah. Yeah, now I see, now can. All right. All right. Now, before this, what we have in our system is all the concentrated load, like one arrow like that. So today we're going to look at uh, distributed load. So as you, as you learn in your uh, static and dynamic class, this is a uh, distributed loading. So this is also quite popular, like one, what I mentioned. It's quite popular in tests, also in uh, final exam. All right. Now. Um, if you look at this 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 system, you, you will be, will we start with a simple system where we consider a beam that connected to uh, a fixed wall at both ends, and then we have a uniform distributed load denoted by W. Okay, so the unit is Newton over meter. Okay, I think you've seen this one before huh? in your static dynamic class. All right. Um, what we're trying to do today is that we're going to apply uh, a distributed loading and then we convert them into a diagram below. So we're going to convert uh, the distributed loading on the top diagram into moment and forces on one end and moment and forces at one end. So we're going to chain this uh, w small w or distributed loading to both ends like what you see on the here so once you you change the top diagram into bottom one you will see uh, the w small w change to moment and force moment and force okay yeah so this is the the idea of today uh, lecture so we're going to change the distributed loading into moment and force Okay, moment and force. Basically, it's quite direct later on. Huh? So we go go through a few uh, theory first. So uh, for today, you need appendix D uh, for for the understanding. So what does you have in appendix D? So if you go to appendix D, and there's another force here. So you just open. And then you will see Appendix D. And we're going to look at this chart and this chart today. Okay, so I'm going to uh, flip this chart. So you're going to see this chart today. Yeah? Uh, okay. So our PowerPoint slides. Uh, a little bit theory, yeah? I'll go a bit fast uh, for the theory. You can read back the slides later on. So what you see on the screen here is that we will look at the simple cases where you having a beam with point 0.1, 2, 3, and 4. Means point 0.1 is this end, point 0.2 is this, uh, this location with the roller uh, ball here. And with the pin, uh, at point number three and uh, the end of the beam at number four. So what we do is that we will use a system called equivalent force system or equivalent nodal force system. We're going to convert the top diagram into the diagram that what we have here. Again, what you see here is we change the small w into moment and force at one end and one end. So meaning we change one W or one parameter into four parameter. So two on one, uh, two parameter for, uh, for one for each of the point. Okay, as you can see here, small W changed to four unknown here. One, two, three, four means moment and force, moment and force. So one changed to four. Okay. And all this value here, you just refer to the appendix D, like what I showed you just now. Okay, it's quite direct for uh, this uh, session. Okay, we start with a little bit of uh, theory on derivation. So this one you can see on the screen here. So 
um, if you can break the small w into uh, into you can break this uh, one two three four point into five point okay so this is uh, one of the strategy when uh, the mathematician they derive the equation so they break the beam from four point into five point by added one of the point at the middle where it balance everything so it basically it just add something into the diagram that it will cancel itself for example as you can see uh, at the middle here right at the middle here you see that the moment cancel each other and then there is uh, one loading that um, equivalent to the force at both ends Okay, so we look at one strategy method where we change where we change this diagram into the bottom diagram. Okay, we we we, we work on one of the strategy we call it work approach or work equivalent method where we focus on work. So before we start, just recall what is the definition of work by using physics. Uh, definition work deal with force and distance travel by the force meaning if you are a reference plane and let's say you have a force f travel from point one to point two. So distance between point one and point two, let's say you have a we label as S or uh, displacement. So the definition of work, the work will be equal force time the distance. Okay, force, the magnitude of the force, times the distance traveled by the force, it will create work. Okay, so this is an important uh, concept for the rest of the lecture. So if you can recall this one, you able to solve uh, uh, this, uh, the problem that covered under work equivalent method. Okay, so important principle or concept, work equal to force time distance. Okay. Now what you see on the screen now is that you having a, a distributed load, but this one, as you can see, there is a curvature, means that it is not well, uh, it's not uh, a linear, it's a non-linear distributed loading. However, uh, as you can see here, we're still using the W to represent uh, distributed uh, loading. And you having a reference axis of Y and X, and you're having a beam connecting point one and point two with the length of L. And as you know, beam, we deal with displacement. So as we discuss about beam, we only focus on V and theta. So it means each point will give you displacement in Y direction and also rotation angle at point one. Okay, this is what we covered uh, in the previous session. All right. So as you can see directly from your screen, uh, if you compare side by side, in a beam system that we learned previously, each point for the beam will give you moment, rotation, and the force at point one, and uh, vertical displacement for point one. So this four parameter is basically important when you study about beam. Okay, beam, we have force, vertical displacement, moment and rotation angle same with point number two okay so this is what we learned in the previous lecture so today we're going to convert the left hand side diagram into right hand side diagram where again we will talk about equivalent uh, we talk about uh, distributed loading change into the four 
parameter that we can see on the screen, or in this case, four parameter for each point. Okay. So we already explained what is work in the physics. Work is force times distance, or S, or T, if you want to use force times distance. So this is the metabolic model when we want to calculate the total work under the distributed loading. So what we do is that we take W is force, V vertical displacement is your S, right? So we want to calculate the work done by the loading. So we take the integration from zero to the last point of the beam or the L, total length. We take the W times the vertical displacement in X direction. Okay. Any question for this? equation here any question anything that you don't understand this uh, equation is is important because later on you'll keep using this uh, equation all right next is l load on, uh, on the integration sign this one you yeah, see like this, this one you link to this one what is your in, what do you integrate with? If you see this mathematic model, you're integrating your dx, right? Mm. What is your x? What is your x component if you refer to this diagram? What is dx? Uh, in the horizontal direction. In the yeah. So you're integrating from 0 to L. Oh, okay. This is very fundamental, uh, Brian. So L is a distance, not load. No. Why you relate to load? Because it, I saw L, so I was uh, go confused. Yeah, don't don't confuse with. You need to understand the basic mathematic model, Brian. This we are integrating something. So integrating this integration sign, referring to the x. Okay, oh. so if I write, if you see a method model, the L something, 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 DF, then you're integrating force. In this case, you're seeing DX. Okay, I'm not sure whether other lecturer using zero to L for force, I'm not sure, but for this module, we never relate L to force. Okay. Uh, do I make the point clear, uh, Brian? Yes, sir. All right. So the next case, uh, as you can see, the top one, the, this equation is for uh, calculating the distributed load uh, setting. Second is what happened if the work is um, in the discrete nodal force dimension. Okay, given by this equation, meaning work can be done by force alone or not force, uh, by the force. In this case, this force we are referring to distributed load, this W. Okay, and another mathematic model, it can be equivalent to a beam structure that we covered just now, each point will give you moment and vertical displacement V, and you have your F1, M1, and uh, rotation one, correct? Now, this one we learned just now. So each point will give you these four parameter. You have M2, V2, rotation two, and F2. Let's say this point number two, this point number one. Okay, so one on the top here, this method model is considering the W. The second method is because we want to equal, uh, we want to make the system equal to a discrete system. In this case, uh, the work 
done by the discrete nodal force. If you look into dimension of the nodal uh, dimension, then you can write uh, the work done in the discrete nodal force is you take moment times rotation, you get work. Moment times rot angle rotation, you get work. Moment times rotation at point number two, you get work. This is work at this is work due to moment and rotation. Okay, rotation. This one also same, but this is point number two. And if you take force, element force at point one times the distance travel in y direction, you also get work, but in the uh, element force, F1. Then same with point number two. So we have four. We have four uh, discrete forces um, happen on the beam. Okay, just to self-check, whether you understand what is happening on the screen here, are you able to differentiate what is this formula for? And this is what this formula for. Yeah, so the top equation is looking at the work because of the distributed load W. The second one, it is because just now we say that we want to develop an equation that link the above diagram to the below diagram. So we can look at the work in the node dimension where we can take moment times rotation and force times the vertical displacement. So in this case, we have two points. So we have one, two, three, four. Okay. So when you develop equation using work equivalent method, what does it mean? It means you take this one equal to work distinct discrete uh, due to nodal forces. Okay, so this is the general equation when you build the uh, equation, when you develop the equation. So by looking at this one, I think you can expect the next slides will show you this one equal to this one. Okay. So let's look at load replacement, meaning we're going to change the left hand side diagram W into right hand side diagram. Okay, so we have again uh, for beam, we have these four uh, parameter for each point. Again, try to remember F equal to KD. So for your force, for your force dimension, uh, let's say I focus on point one. So point one, uh, point one and point two, right? So your force, if you write in the matrix form, you have F1Y, moment one, F2Y, and moment two. This is for your, when you put into matrix form, K standard, right? And the D, the D you have here is V1, rotation one, V2, rotation two. Okay, this is just to recap uh, what we learned previously. Okay. So we will look at uh, distributed loading in this case. Later, I will show you a non-linear distributed load where you, you are seeing a triangular shape of distributed load. Now we look at the rectangular uniform distributed load and we convert to this one, okay? So how we do it? So as we covered just now, we are using a work equivalent met approach. So we write work distributed, uh, work due to the distributed load W will equal to work done by the discrete forces. Uh, this is due to W. This side is due to the force V, rotation, and moment. 
we have four just now. One, two, three, four just now. I saw in the slides. Okay. Then recall these two equations just now. One is distributed, one is discrete dimension. So we put them together in mathematic form. So, so far makes sense to you, right? I think this one is quite direct. All right. All right so this one I already explained. Okay. So the first two is due to moment. Second one is due to the uh, forces. Okay. And in this case, we start because we have a reference uh, axis normally. So we have Y going up positive, going to the left axis positive. So as you can see here, our W, small w, is a negative W sign. Okay, so just take note on this one. When you solve question uh, later on in your final exam or a test, so make sure you take note on this one. So normally, this also uh, one of the error done by the student where they usually forget about the axis or direction. So W, w is negative it is in this scenario because it's going down. And uh, we, can, we can build uh, in the previous lecture when we talk about displacement uh, for the beam in polynomial equation, we already derived this, this one in the one of the session. Okay, so we just take back what what will the what will the beam behave under loading? So under beam, the vertical displacement will behave in a polynomial uh, equation. So we will just use back the polynomial equation that we derived in the previous lecture. So we put in here V, this V is a vertical displacement. So what we do here, we will integrate, we try to integrate this one, put in a mathematic model. What does it mean? It means that if you try to develop this equation, Wx is our force, all right? So, and then your Vx, or V function X is equal to this whole thing. So later you're going to substitute this one in here. This whole thing inside here, and then you integrate with the X direction. Okay, I'm going to do the first one for you. This one, I'm going to take this one to do a simple equation and then you do the rest, okay? So I'm doing the first one. So I'm demonstrate the first point I derive from the equation. So the first one, I put the W. So W is negative W. So that's why you see a negative W here. Okay, then the next one is Vx. Vx, I put the first one first because it's a lengthy equation. So the first equation is two divided by L cubed. V1 minus V2, remember to pull this one in here. As a result, you get this one. So you are seeing 2L, uh, 2 divided by L cubed, V1 minus V2, X cubed, and then dx. Any question on the blue color mathematic model here? Can you see how you arrive at this stage? How you get the blue color uh, equation? Brian, you understand, right? Brian, are you there? Yes, I'm here. All right. So you understand, right? The the blue color equation. Do you understand how you get it? Yes. Yes, sir. Huh? So you understand? Yes. Okay. Good. All right. So I will just do a simple uh, steps for you. So what does it mean is that you just continue with your integration steps. So when you integrate uh, x power 3, you will get this form. And then you substitute the L and 0 inside there, you will get this answer. Okay. So after you insert this answer, you simplify the equation where this one will cancel the L. This one 
will be 2. So you arrive at minus LW divided by 2, V1 minus V2. And this one is only work for the first V. Ashma, you understand what we are discussing now? Yes, sir. All right, good. Excellent. So you continue doing for the rest. If this one, after you integrate, you get this one. Okay, after you integrate, you get this one. Then you do this one, you will get this one. Then you do this one, you get this one. And this one, you get this one. And get this one, you get this one. All right. So basically, you can uh, refer back to these slides later on. So basically, what, what I'm trying to guide you is that there is a way to get this equation. After that, you get this form. Okay, I put the two equations together. So later, we will equal this blue color to the this side of the equation. Right? So we need to solve the equation by using boundary condition. So this is called boundary condition. So in, in the test or final exam later on, you will be told to write out the boundary condition. So what mean by the boundary condition? So um, if we just put a scenario, so for example, point one, okay? So for point one, if you have a rotation at one equals zero, and then the rest value is zero, meaning your, your vertical displacement zero, there's no rotation at point two, zero, there's no displacement at point two, zero. Then we check what happened to this equation. Okay, this is a boundary condition setting just to check what is the unknown value or what is the uh, a constant value that we need to find. So if we apply the first boundary condition, as you can see, I add some arrow to the screen on the top screen here. What does it mean? It means that if we have the first scenario, this one equal to one, all right? And this one zero because uh, something times zero, zero. <coughs> Excuse me. And this one also zero. This one also zero. You will arrive and then for the second one here, because V1, V1 zero, V2 zero. So you take this one times zero, you get zero. You do the same for the rest. This one, this one have value. This is one. And then this one zero. This one will equal to zero also because V1 zero minus zero, zero. LW times zero, zero. This one also cancel the rotation by two because in our first bounding condition, we already mentioned uh, rotation number two, angle rotation number two is zero. You continue doing, you keep this one we have value. And this one we can cancel because V1 is zero, so we can cancel. So first scenario, we arrive at one equation, okay, where you can see on the left-hand side of the screen, you get M1 because you have having this one equal to this whole thing, okay, equal to this whole thing. So you just summarize what you have. So for example, the first one you get uh, uh, L2, uh, hold on, oh yeah, you just rearrange, lah, okay, you will get minus LW divided by 2 uh, and so on. Uh, do I miss it? Okay, let me, see, I, this is typo error, is it? Let me check back again. Eh?
this one now four now two yeah correct if you rearrange this equation you'll get this one all right this one you rearrange from this equation okay before we move on um stop me if you don't understand how you get this one raise your okay raise your voice or let me know if you don't understand how you get m1 with the uh Rotation angle number one, you get this one. So you understand, right? Uh, yes. Okay, good. Now we get the first boundary condition for this is first boundary condition. You get this equation. You do the same. We repeat the same for you simplify, you get this uh, minus. W L square and two and twelve. Then you do for the uh, second boundary condition. This is second boundary condition. Where you repeat the same procedure, but now you set rotation one zero, uh, rotation two. You have number V one zero V two zero. You do the same process like just now. Okay, you arrive at M two one equal to this one you simplify you get minus w l square divided by 12. okay before i move forward do are you able to explain how you get if you apply this bounding condition are you able to explain how you arrive at here okay you will be the same principle huh? You will be the same principle as step one, only you apply the boundary condition into these two equations here. Then you rearrange the equation, you will get uh, for the second boundary condition where your rotation angle equal to one and then the rest is zero in these two equations, you arrive at minus WL squared divided by 12. Okay. And then you apply one more time the boundary condition number three where you set rotation one zero, rotation two zero, and then now you set vertical one zero, vertical displacement zero, vertical two zero, you apply the same as the step step one just now. You apply this all these numbers into these two equation. You get the third equation where you will get forces one equal minus something. You rearrange, you get minus L W divided by two. Okay, so by now you should able to see the the flow of a mathematics derivation. The next one we have one more where you will uh, let boundary condition number four all is zero except V two is one. Then again you apply this four number into this two equation. You rearrange you get the, the the new equation you get f two y one equal to something and then you rearrange you get minus w uh, l w divided by two. Brian, uh, do, can you follow? Brian, are you there? Yes, sir. Yeah. Are you able to follow? Are you able to understand how you get this one, how you get this one, how you get this one, how you get this one? Ryan, you are good, right? Yes, but so sir, so you go on changing the boundary condition. Yes, you only change the boundary condition four times. Meaning you set four condition, uh, four scenario. We have first scenario where only rotation one is zero, uh, one, and then the rest is zero. Condition number two, uh, rotation angle one, the rest zero. Boundary condition three, 
vertical displacement one, one, and then the rest zero. Number four is the displacement or vertical displacement at point two is one, the rest zero. Then you get the equation. You apply using, you substitute inside these two equations. You play around these two equations. Then you get these four new equations. Mm. All right? Yeah. Ashma, are you clear what is happening on the screen? Yes, sir. Okay, good. Now, with this, as I put back the screen here, you can equal the left hand side to right hand side by giving M1. If you want to calculate this number, you just use this formula minus WL square divided by 12. Meaning in exam, you'll get your length maybe 10 meter. Your W may be uh, 10 Newton over meter. Then you can do, you can calculate what is your M1 already. So your M1, you take, uh, for example, you take 10 Newton meter times the uh, 10 power 2 divided by 12, you get your M1. Then if you want to find what is the value for M2, you use this equation. Okay, you use this equation. Again, you take the W given in the question times the L square divided by 12, you get M2. Again, negative sign. Eh? Negative sign. Okay, just to check. Uh, um, Chia, are you there? Chia? Yes, sir. When you see negative something for a moment, what does it mean? What is the direction for the moment? For example, this, this one. What is the direction for M21? Uh, yeah, so negative it means clockwise huh? because positive is anticlockwise. So if you have a negative sign, it means you're having for a moment at two when you calculate, remember there's a negative sign there. Okay, yeah. So same, uh, apply for the force. If you want to calculate the force magnitude, you just use this formula. You take L times W divided by 2. However, there's a negative sign there. Force negative means going down. Eh? Yeah. So, yeah. Then same with the F2 also. Okay. It means that you convert the left hand side to right hand side and then you use the substitution of the numbers. So if you compare side by side of these slides, to the appendix D where I will show you. You see the first one, uh, this one. Uh, let me see, I'm uh, able to draw anything on the... Okay, let my computer to ready the document. Oh. So as you can see, our, we have a case number four, if you refer to a petix D. As you can see, we're having a well distributed load. And then if you look at F1Y, the value in this table is negative WL divided by two. Remember to refer to this diagram. Huh? So you are converting this one to this diagram. So we just explained to you how you get F1Y equal to negative WL divided by two your M1 equal to negative WL squared divided by two by in the presentation just now. Are you able to see the relationship? Now, for example, we already converted uh, this diagram into this one. And if you want to calculate moment at point one, you use negative WL squared divided by 12. So if you go to this diagram straight away, you don't, you don't need to worry about the derivation. Straight away, you refer to this table. If you want to convert this one to this diagram, you just straight away use this formula. Does it clear to you? This table appendix is important for your test or final exam. Okay. All right. So, um, okay. I think we have a short break. Okay, we have a short break. Uh, the next time we have to use that table.
the, yeah, I mean the, the next the next uh the, the second session later on after we come back from a short break, I will teach you how to use the table. Okay. How to how do you analyze the distributed loading on the pin? For 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 the first session now, it's just that I explain to you uh how 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 this table value come from. For example, I just explained the case number four in the table. How how when you want to convert this case number four into this diagram, and then uh, we will get F1Y straight away, you can use negative WL divided by two. So F1Y is what is here. So in our lecture just now, I already explained, for example, F1Y equal to negative LW divided by two. Agree with this appendix. Okay. Are you clear, Brian? Yes. Okay, good. We go for a 10 minutes break, so then we come back. Yeah? So now it's about 12.15. Uh, oh, let me stop the recording.